today we will discuss beam modifying devices these are defined as desirable modification in the spiral distribution of radiation within the patient by inserting of any material in the beam path there are four types of beam modification shielding compensation wedge filtration and flattening in shielding we use to eliminate radiation dose to some special parts of the zone at which the beam is directed in compensation is used to allow normal dose distribution data to be applied to the treated zone when the beam enters through the body or where different type of tissues are present in wedge filtration a special tilt in isodose curve is obtained and in flattening the spiral distribution of natural beam is altered by reducing the central exposure rate related to the peripheral these are different beam modification devices like shielding blocks custom blocks asymmetrical jaws multi leaf collimators compensators beam spoilers wedge filters beam flattening filters bolus breast cone penumbra trimmers and electron beam modification first we will discuss about shielding since radiation attenuation is exponential and because of scattering complete shielding can never be achieved so the aims of the shielding are to protect critical organs to avoid unnecessary irradiation to surrounding normal tissue and to match adjacent fields a shielding material should have the following characteristics like high atomic number high density easily available inexpensive the choice of the shielding material is also dictated by the type of beam which are used and the most commonly used shielding material for photons is lead and thickness is depend upon the beam energy for practical purposes the shielding material which reduce the beam transmission to 5% of its original is considered acceptable half alloy layer is defined as the thickness of material which will reduce the intensity of primary beam by 50% if we use 4 mv beam energy required lead thickness will be 6 cm for 6 mv beam energy required lead thickness is 6.5 cm for 10 mv beam energy required lead thickness is 7 cm and for cobalt 60 having average energy 1.25 mev the required lead thickness is 5 cm in kilovoltage radiation shielding is rarely achieved by placing sheets of lead on the surface directly and in megavoltage radiation thicker blocks used placed higher up in a shadow tray 15 to 20 cm over its increase in skin dose due to electron scatter and also impossible to place the heavy blocks on the body custom blocks are made up of lipovids material or zero band which have a melting point of 70 degree celsius with a density of 9.4 g of per cm cube at 20 degree celsius which is 83% of lead 1.21 times thicker block necessary to produce the same attenuation which is done by the lead blocks and most commonly used thickness is 7.5 cm shielding blocks are of two types positive blocks and negative blocks in positive blocks the central area is blocked and in negative blocks the peripheral area is blocked in a diverging block we means that the block follows the geometric divergence of the beam this minimizes the block transmission penumbra independent jaw independent jaw are used when we want to block off the part of field without changing the position of isocenter independently movable jaw allow us to shield a part of the field and thus can be used for beam splitting here beam is blocked off at the central axis to remove the divergence use of independent jaws and other beam blocking devices results in the shift of isodose curves this is due to the elimination of photon and electron scatter from the blocked part of the field in multi leaf collimators multi leaf collimators are a bank of large number of collimating blocks which are 40 pairs in number having a thickness of greater less than 1 cm or equal to 1 cm 
with a thickness of 6 to 7.5 cm made up of tungsten alloy with a density of 17 to 80.5 gram per centimeter cube uh, there are some primary transmission of x-ray occur through the leaves which is less than 2 cm 2 percent interleaf transmission less than 3 percent for joe it is 1 percent and for zero band block it is 3.5 percent there are some advantages of multi-leaf collimator which are Time for shaping and inserting of custom blocks is not required. The hardening of beam scatter radiation and increase in skin dose and dose outside the field as seen with physical compensators is avoided. Automation of reshaping and modulation of beam intensity in IMRT. MLC can also be used as dynamic wedges and electronic compensators. There are some disadvantages of multi-leaf polymeters. Iceland blocking is not possible because the physical penumbra is larger than that produced by the zeroband blocks. Treatment of smaller field is difficult as is the shielding of critical structure near the field. The jacked boundary of the field makes matching difficult. Practically, smaller fields are used because multi-leaf collimators, carriages and secondary jaw don't move during IMRT delivery, making matching of field. Compensators. Compensator is also a being modifying devices which even out the skin surface contours while retaining the skin sparing advantage. It allows normal depth dose data to be used for such irregular surface. Compensators can also be used for to compensate for tissue heterogeneity, to compensate for dose irregularities arising due to reduced scatter near the field edges. The dimensions and the shape of compensator must be adjusted to account for beam divergence, linear attenuation coefficient of the filter material and soft tissue, reduction in scatters at various depths due to the compensating filters when it is placed at a distance away from the skin. To compensate for these factors, a tissue compensator is always has an attenuation less than the required for primary radiation. As the distance between the skin and the compensator increases, the thickness decreases or decreases. The thickness ratio is depend upon the compensator to surface distance, thickness of the missing tissue, field size, depth and beam quality. The term compensator ratio is inverse of the thickness ratio. Compensator wedges Compensating wedges are useful where the contour can be approximated with a straight line for an oblique beam. Three important differences between the compensating wedges and the wedge filters are first one is standard isodose curves can be used, second is no wedge transmission factors are required, third is partial field compensation can be done. Setup as a filter surface distance calculated greater than or equal to 20 cm. Nominal SST measured from a plane perpendicular to beam axis touching the highest point in the contour. In SCD technique, the depth of the isocenter is measured from the same elevated point only. Beam spoilers. Special beam modification device where shadow trays made from loose sheet are kept at a certain distance from the skin. Based on the principle that relative surface dose increases when the surface to trade distance is reduced. Wedge filters, which cause a progressive decrease in intensity across the beam, resulting in tilting the isodose curve from their normal position. The degree of the tilt depends upon the slope of the wedge. Material which are used to make wedge filters are tungsten, brass, lead, or steel. We, these are mounted usually at a distance 15 cm from the skin surface. The sloping surface is either made straight or sigmoid in shape as sigmoid shape produces straighter isodose curves mounted on the trays which are mounted to the head of the machine. Types of wedge system are individualized wedge, universal wedge, dynamic wedge, virtual wedge, pseudo wedge. The two dimensions of wedges are very important, where x is the width and y is the length. 
all wedges are aligned so that the central axis of the beam is the is at the central axis of the wedge if the x dimension x means width of field is longer then we can't use the wedge without risking a hot spot universal wedges are designed so that the same wedge can be used with all field sizes this is usually as at save times however not stable for cobalt beams because of excessive reduction of beam output with smaller field size wedges angles are used which are 15 degree 30 degree 45 degree and 60 degree the presence of the wedge decreases output of the machine wedge transmission factor is equals to dose with the wedge and dose without wedge ratio usually measured at a stable depth below the t max usually at 5 to 10 cm this minimizes the error in calculation of the percentage depth dose the resultant reduction in the output results in increase in the treatment time dynamic wedge or motorized wedges as they were once called 60 degree wedge mounted in the treatment end itself this wedge was moved into the field for part of the time to create the wedge beam profile desired virtual wedges or dynamic enhanced wedges are moving jaws that are moved by computer controlled to create wedge beam profile however use has not resulted in significant improvement over conventional wedges fixed jaws can be used to produce pseudo wedges where part of treatment will require greater dose should be irradiated using smaller field size flattening filters a beam flattening filter reduces the central exposure rate related to that near the edge of the beam used for linear accelerators due to the lower scatter the isodes curve are exhibit forward peaking the filter is designed so that the thickest part in the center material which are made for flattening filters copper or brass penetrating power should not increases as this will later the percentage depth dose as well as reduce the flattening in cobalt beam the beam is almost mono energetic source emit uniform radiation all around bolus bolus is a tissue equivalent material used to reduce the depth of the maximum dose better called build up bolus a bolus can be used in place of a compensator for kilo voltage radiation to even out the skin surface contours in mega voltage radiation bolus is primarily used to bring up the build up zone near the skin in treating superficial lesions the thickness of bolus used varies according to the energy of the radiation for cobalt 60 uh, the thickness of bolus is 2 to 3 mm for 6 mm beam it is 7 to 8 mm for 10 mm beam it is 12 to 14 mm and for 25 mm it will be 18 to 20 mm these are some properties of bolus same electron density and atomic number pliable to conform to surface usually specific gravity is 1.02 to 1.03 commonly used material are cotton soaked with water and paraffin wax other material like mixed tea tamex rubber spicer bolus commercial material are super flab and super stuff breast cone a beam modifying and directing device used for a tangential field therapy advantages are direct beam to the central axis of the area of interest where a tangential beam is applied to a curved surface helps position the patient with an accurate assist and plate provide compensation enhances surface dose and presses down the tissue effective shielding of lungs penumbra trimmers refers to the region at the edge of the beam where the dose rate changes rapidly at a function of distance from the beam axis types transmission penumbra transmission through the edges of the collimator blocks geometric penumbra due to finite size of surface source physical penumbra lateral distances between two specified isodes curve at a specific depth 90% and 20% as d max takes scatter radiation into account penumbra width depend upon source diameter ssd depth below skin scattering foil a device to widen the thin pencil beam of electrons metallic plates of tin lead and aluminum are used with the disadvantages beam attenuation 
generation of Bram Stroudung radiation and having advantages like less prone to mechanical errors, less expensive, requires less instrumentation. Nowadays, dual pole systems are used which compare well with the scanning beams. Thank you.